Start off saying shalom to everyone out there. Um, definitely want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High. Um, his son, Yeshua, the world knows as Jesus Christ. And uh, honor to the Ruach HaKodesh or the Holy Spirit. Um, I was putting together some things. I want to say maybe this past weekend. And a quick testimony, shalom, brother. A quick testimony. Um, I had a family member fall ill. Um, we were worried about him, couldn't reach the person. When I was finally able to reach him, um, even the police uh, were not able to break down the doors to get to them because they were unresponsive. Finally, had to have uh, maintenance people uh, drill locks to get to him got to them they were unconscious uh but breathing and alive um due to their conditions and medical conditions that no one else had knowledge of let's just say that person shouldn't have been found alive so in that was already a miracle as far as i'm concerned as far as the most high is concerned um moving forward um could barely talk in and out of sleep almost like a diabetic coma and, and within three days of a lot of fervent prayer from um the righteous plenty of people praying prayer warriors all over um persons up eating drinking has some of their um um has some of their, their wits back about them um just a quick background if you know anything about stroke victims it's almost like your brain gets a reset um, depending on if it's one stroke or this person, they had quite a few um, in a very short period of time, in a period of like two or three days. Um, so for them to start getting their wherewithal, um, be able to acknowledge where they are, um, um, intellectual cognition, or how they see, how they usually talk, how they think, um, it's usually not normal for those things to just start off like that. And within three days, they're already working back. Um, you know, obviously, it's not like waking up from a dream and just talking and thinking. But for that person, it's just like a very long dream. So, again, so this testimony, um, I, I couldn't. Words can really describe how gracious I am to the most high. It's a very close family member of mine. Um, and it was all I could do was pray. Uh, it's nothing like that helpless feeling where you can't help somebody. You feel like you can't help somebody. Um, but I knew the best thing I could do and all I could do was pray and, and leave it in his hands. And um, it just goes to show with faith. And again, you know, he, you know, your prayers are an abomination to him if you're not righteous, if you're not following him, you know, if you're not doing what you're supposed to do. But when you are and you pray and you have others who do the same thing, uh, you know, two or three gather in his name and boom, you know, you you, you sending off smoke signals to the most high um, and he answers prayers. And I, I don't maybe I know it's not just my experience, but I know for a fact that anytime I put off a fervent prayer, something that I deem say I deem that we all deem half what we want and what we feel we need. As a prayer, we deem it an emergency, but I, 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 I can see it. I've seen it for a couple of years now. We pray it usually takes about three days and the prayers is answered. So, like I said, I definitely want to give that as a testimony. Stay faithful. Um, stay righteous. Stay following the laws God that were given to us by our son, Yeshia, um, and all things will work out um, for the will of the father. He's going to answer your prayers. It's either going to be exactly what you want or, or, uh, it, or it's going to be exactly what he wishes. If they both wills line up, then it's going to be what's going to happen. If it's his will, it's going to be his will. So always pray at the end of your prayers that his will be done. And then we just have to sit with what happens with that. Um, with that being said, um, Shalom says, I'm going to move forward. I just got a few references um, to help tape some things together. We got a lot of folks 
um, that are going with what they see, what they hear, what they've been taught, and they're regurgitating it. And we do the same thing every year, every February, about Black History Month, not realizing it's really world history. And they try to pigeonhole it into what happens with people of color in a few continents across the world just during this particular month when it's people of color and people not of color that should be celebrated throughout. And when I mean by celebrated, it should be acknowledged. Uh, we're not trying to give everybody different honors and glories um, because of what they did or what they didn't do, but the truth should be acknowledged. And I think that's what's most important right now for anybody that's seeking the truth. We, we can't watch the news right now and see the truth. You know, you got one thing that's political and, 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 you know, we got because of what we've been taught for years, what they've thrown in our face for years, when they give you the truth, you don't want to see it. I'll give you a for instance, and then we'll move on. Right now, they got folks that have been believing that there was a Russia collusion with um, ex-president Trump or former president Trump for the longest time because it was just thrown out there that that's what he did. Now you got a person that went in and found where folks were used, um, contractors were used by the Clinton campaign um, to go ahead and search for something by going into something that they weren't supposed to. Um, basically hackers, hack in, try to find something. And then instead of giving the truth directly to the FBI, they messed the stuff around, then gave it to them and sent them on a wild goose chase as a last ditch effort to win the um, election. The whole point of the matter is, I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican. I don't believe in the system. It never works out for us. Never does. It only works out for the people that are rich. So I don't care who won, who's the president, and who's not. It's just a puppet talking about everything else for their people and giving us a, a line of BS. So before you go, whether I have this Trump or Biden, or I don't care. I don't care. That's up to you. If you want to judge off of that, you can do it. But what the most high wants is the truth. Period. And he wants his people to not only see the truth, to search out the truth, but to speak the truth. And today, I'm not only going to speak the truth to you, but I'm going to show you where it's been hidden from us in all of our curriculums, coming from grade school all the way up to 12. And even when we go to these colleges. You have some folks that go to these prestigious colleges and they get to see this stuff, but they see it, whether they have faith in it or not, they choose not to talk about it and choose not to bring it out because they're worrying about getting ostracized and demonized for telling the truth. So they'll live in the fantasy. They'll live in the lie because they're comfortable in it and it doesn't matter their color. So first and foremost, please understand what I'm giving to the people today isn't for one race of people. Yes, I'm speaking about specifically black history. But what we got to understand is we've all been lied to. When it says they're going to wake up one day and understand that we have inherited lies, our fathers have inherited lies, and therefore we inherited lies, that's exactly what happened to all of us. To hide one people group, to hide who they truly are, you have to lie to everybody else and continue that lie for hundreds of years. That's what's happened. So without further ado, we're going to go into a book. It's called The One World Tartorians. If you have this book, you can follow along with me. or You may know where I'm going with this. So with this book by James W. Lee, it is a lot of his own works. And then he's been able to use different books from other folks, um, different excerpts from other people who have done some of the work prior. Um, I would definitely tell you to go ahead and grab this for yourself. And <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll start with page 18. Page 18 talks about the King James Version and talks about places as far as Abaddon, Hades, Heaven, Hell, Paradise, Shoal, and Tartarus. Um, so it goes into all the different names of these places and it gets to a point on page 19 where it says 
Tartarian Native Americans are considered Hebrew Israelites. It's very possible that the true Hebrew Israelites are Scythian, Tartarian, based on older maps as reference when Tartar, Scythia, encompassed all of Russia, parts of Europe, and Asia. Seems like this is an open secret with the Native American community. Then it goes as far as talking about where the Native Americans are, how they've gone from the globe to China, continent of Brazil, or Carth Carthaginians as Israelites, or AKA um, Scythians of the North. It talks about the Native American descendants were possessed of an extraordinary divine spirit in which the future told events that was transmitted to their offspring, providing they obeyed sacred laws annexed to it. Now, what we know about the Bible is the people in the Bible, every time they got in trouble, every time these Hebrews got in trouble, it was because they weren't following the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, and they got punished. How did they get punished? The Most High would raise another nation up against them. But we were always told that the people that are folks in the Bible are the people who transferred or converted themselves to the religion of Judaism. In our ignorance, we didn't understand what that meant. First of all, the most high is about relationship and not about religions. We understand now, a lot of us understand now that the way the religions were set up, it gives you a little bit of the truth about the most high, regardless of what scripture it uses, but it doesn't give you the full context of everything. We learned in 1 Maccabees 138, when you go into um, the apocryphal writings, you find out that during the Greek captivity, they took the book of the law, so they took the scriptures, and they started writing their face in it. And this is what I leave for people to think about, because it was tampered with. They not only tampered with the faces then, but they tampered with certain names, certain passages of scripture. They either added to or they took away. How do we know that? Daniel, uh, Daniel chapter 7 and 25. And we can go straight to that now. So again, we are going to speak biblically, but we're going to put everything together using other sources as well. Because I'm going to paint a picture that's broad that gets all the way to a narrow gate and a narrow pass. We're going to go to Daniel. Chapter 7, verse 25, and it reads, And he shall speak great words against the Lord, and he shall wear out the saints, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand into a period of a time, a times and a dividing time. So you're going to ask yourself, why was I reading where it was talking about uh, Hebrews, Israelites, and Native Americans? Well, I'm going to show you several different books um, before I really get into this one and just give you just a few spots, especially talking about who the natives of America were. And when they use the term Moors, it just means black as far as the color instead of copper color. Doesn't necessarily mean Muslims. I'm going to show you a few books. So this book right here I had to get printed out because you cannot um, purchase it straight out away. This book right here talking about the 10 tribes historically identified with the Aborigines of the Western Hemisphere. Okay, this book is at Harvard. This book is at Harvard's seminary. Yeah, Harvard. So over in England, they knew who the children of Israel, a remnant branch, where the 10 tribes were, they knew who they were. Where's the Western Hemisphere? That's here. This isn't Europe. This isn't over in Ethiopia, what we call Africa now. This is here. This is one source. It's by Mrs. Simon. So 
I want you to be able to check that out. The next one, it's called The History of the Effects of Religion on Mankind. And I don't know if you can read what it's saying. how old this book is, but I'll read it for you. In countries in modern, barbarous, and civilized, talking about the effect of Judaism on the Hebrews. Next, it talks about the effects of Christianity. Then it talks about the effects of Mohammedism. See, all this stuff that we hear, like Islam, there was different names for it back then, but they've changed names. So this goes into this book right here in particular, this book will let you know. That book will let you know about the customs that the people were doing when they came here. When they came to the Americas. Now, again, I'm painting a road because we're. I'm just giving you these sources. This is not going to be a long lecture. I'm giving you these sources because I want you to look them up for yourself. Being intellectually lazy is what's gotten us into this point where we don't know anything, where we're willing to pay people to sit in front of them to listen to what they have to say and then form our beliefs based on what they've told us out of what they've read, out of an outline that they were given to give to you. That's what we have to understand. And it didn't stop in schools and in secular schools. The same thing actually happens in our churches, in these religions today. The people will get a book that tell them, hey, you know, you should read it, you should check it out. But most people won't because they're lazy. I'm too busy. I got other stuff to do. And they're going to sit in front of somebody who's a motivational speaker, very charismatic and uses emotionalism to entrap them. And when that happens, especially upon the Christian faith, you got folks that don't know what Deuteronomy 14 says. So they're still tithing and giving their money to these people instead of taking care of the orphans, the homeless, the needy, the widowers, what we're supposed to do with our arms and that our tithe is for us in the most high. There is no third temple. The people in Hebrews chapter eight, verses eight through 11 are the folks that he made covenant with, with the children of Israel and all those that fall under them, meaning you're now giving to not just his people, the children of Israel, but the Gentiles who they are among. That is how their transgression, same as Adam in the Garden of Eden, that is how their transgression helped to save the rest of the world. We don't realize the Bible is a lot of parables, but there's a lot of dual prophecies, and a lot of those prophecies were taken out. There were prophecies from Joseph that were taken out. I'm going to speak on one of them today. I want you guys to think about some of this stuff, though. Moses, Abraham. They were they were patriarchs. They were they were. Whew, talk about Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Imagine what those guys were of that day. Moses. One man who grew up as an Egyptian came back, understanding who he was, broke a whole people free away from captivity. Used by the most high Abraham, because he had questions about, man, what is this God? What is that God? I don't believe in this one. If I can make it with my hands of rock or of stone and wood, then, you know, is it really a God? Can I push it over? It can't eat. We hear accounts of Abraham, but we get nothing from his words. Nobody ever wonders why. It's because in Daniel 7, 25, they took away stuff. Now, they did that back then in Jerusalem. Everywhere there were people that were Hebrew, that were conquered, they took away their records. They changed it. And then when they gave it back to them, it was as if it was their own stuff. And this is what they need to learn. Did that not happen here? Ever heard of the slave Bible? You should look it up and see what chapters were stripped out of it. 
and what was left in to be completely taken out of context. Lastly, before I continue on here, I want you to think about this. When you get your Bible, whatever version you get, how often will you see a within the spine of it, of the book, and within the middle of the pages, you'll see precepts. Precepts are different scripture that line up with what you're reading in that particular chapter. When I was younger, in the older books, in the older Bibles, they had precepts all up and down the spine. When you read certain areas of the chapter and then you go to the other parts of the book that it's telling you to go to, you'll see that's two, three, four witnesses that are saying the same thing. And it gives you full context of what you're reading. Notice how they've taken all those things out now. Because they knew there would be a time that the children of Israel would wake up, see the truth for what it is, study it for what it is, ingrain their love for the Most High fall back in line and covenant with him and follow his laws and commandments. People think you're supposed to follow, what is it, 613, 617 laws. If you obey the Ten Commandments, you'll follow the two greatest commandments that were given to you by Christ. If you follow the Ten Commandments, it's literally teaching you the moral laws and then the regular laws, like not covenant our neighbor, um, keeping the Sabbath, no idols. It's it's breaking it down to you. One of, I want to say, one is four, one is six. But they're breaking down everything to you, which encompasses all of that stuff if you just follow the Ten Commandments. But you have to follow them. You can, To be told to do against what the Bible teaches, what Christ himself taught, is ludicrous. And we all did it. We all did it. We all fell for it because we didn't have the Holy Spirit abiding with us. And we didn't understand why not. We think, oh, we got baptized, then we're good. Well, guess what? If you get baptized and you say, oh, okay, I'm going to live right. Well, how do you live right? You live right by the example you was given. You live right by the example that was given through Christ and how he taught his disciples to live. Are any of these people that we see these modern days living in those examples? How do their houses look? How do their clothes look? How big are their churches? Where is that money going? Are they feeding the people? Are they doing those things that Christ did? Because if they're not, they're not examples of Christ. That's how you judge folks. Not by how well they speak or how well they say they know their Bible. Because a lot of folks know their Bible well enough to stay away from the stuff that shows that they're hypocrites and that they're false prophets. A lot of people got titles that they don't deserve or their title as a prophet and a prophet of God. What God? What God are you a prophet of? Are you working for Satan or the most high? Because if you're working for the most high, you're teaching the children of men the gospel of Christ and you're teaching them to follow Christ as an example. We had that term come out a long time ago. What would Jesus do? It shows you throughout Matthew. It shows you what he taught his people to do. He shows you what to do. Are people following that example this day or are they doing what they want to do? Are they chasing money or are they chasing things in heaven? They storing up their treasures in heaven by doing their works here on this earth. People think you don't have to work. Does it make sense to say you don't have to work anymore? Adam had to work. His sons had to work. So why would you think because Christ come now we don't have to work. All we got to do is pray and everything's good. Our sins are keep over and over again. That's the exact same thing that people did under the old covenant when there was a law of blood sacrifice. They sinned six days a week. On the seventh day, they brought some animal to get sacrificed for the sake of their sins, and they went right back to sin all over again. And we're repeating the same thing our ancestors did. Now, mind you, I'm letting the Holy Spirit go with this, so please definitely bear with me, but I want to give you a full accounting of what I'm showing you and an understanding to go with it. So it talked about the folks on the Western Hemisphere, right? And so what we don't understand, again, another book called The History of Ancient America. What does that say? Same thing, right? The identity of the Aborigines, the Tyrians, and the Israelites. Second edition, 1843. 
That's almost 200 years ago. I don't know what y'all know about these. I, I, I said Natural Select is the name of the, the books. Scholar Select. If you see there. So Scholar Select books. They said as a reproduction of a historical artifact. This work is in the public domain in the United States of America and possibly other nations within the United States. You may freely copy and distribute this work as no entity, individual corporate has a copyright on this body of work. We thank you for being an important part of keeping this knowledge alive and relevant. Why is that? Because somebody wants to put out the truth. But do we want to be diligent enough to study to find ourselves approved? This information has been out for 200 years. So you got to ask yourself, those folks that go to these schools, these seminary schools, are they looking at the same type of information? Why aren't the people in churches teaching you that you are the children of Israel? And that we are supposed to follow the commandments. And then we're not supposed to go on Sunday, but we're supposed to keep the Sabbath holy because it's a sign for his people to know who they are and who he is to them. I'll tell you why. Like I said, we're going to the, the, the book, this book here called Undeniable by Dante Forson gives you the pictures of what they know about in Russia. Like I said, I didn't want to get political, but if you've gone to Europe, if you've gone to Russia, if you've seen the book Russian Icons, that's who these people are. That's what they have over there. They never changed it. They didn't whitewash it over there. Everywhere else in Europe, they did. Everywhere we were, everywhere there was royalty that was this color, copper colored, which, by the way, when you look at Webster's Dictionary of 1838, the term American means copper colored aboriginals of the Americas, but it was later changed to the descendants of the European immigrants. So when I tell you about being whited out, they did the same thing with what you call $5 Indians. The truth hurts. I'm, I'm not, I can't lie to you because it hurt me, but the truth hurts. But most of the people you've seen on the old country Westerns, those aren't real Indians. If you look at the Netflix movie, The Harder They Fall, those were real Indians. Our people portraying who the real Indians and who the real cowboys were. Same thing. Think about it. Cowboys. What did they call the folks in slavery? Boy. What did they call you up until maybe 40 years ago? Boy. Trust me, I'm, I'm piecing it all together. But as I said with the Bible, when we talking about black history, this is it. You want to see a few pictures of, again, what's not in just in this book, but is on display in Russia? Mind you, everywhere you go where this information is or was, it's been removed and changed. Call it in. Why do you think that is? This next one I'm about to show you is called the Byzantine Psalter, but it's showing you saints, disciples, not colored over, showing you the hue when they're talking about red, like the ruddy heifer. Well, when you're trying to hide a people's identity, trying to hide who they are and hide it from the world, you don't want people to see. You don't want people to see. Christ washing the feet of his disciples. Again, this book is Undeniable, Full-Color Evidence of the Black Israelites in the Bible by Dante Forson. 
this book doesn't cost much maybe 20 bucks 25 dollars Daniel the prophet like I said this book right here gives you some of the information from Russian icons to buy Russian icons you're looking to spend at least fifteen hundred dollars you can look that up on Amazon um, eBay um, a lot of different places one of the things it talks about in this book that black slaves knew Hebrew. Why do you think they knew Hebrew? Kumbaya, kumbaya. What's the meaning of kumbaya in the Strongs? Abba, Father. Come here, Father. That's when they're singing. When you're saying hallelujah, who, who are you talking to? To Yah. So we knew what that meant. So we know folks that know that they... Got Geechee, Gullah, right? Gullah and Strong's Basin, Bowl, Spring. Isn't that over there? North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. Uh, again, and then this information is in the, in the Library of Congress. So again, when I tell you they know who you are, they know. But they're afraid is when you wake up. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is its beginning. So, like I said, in this book, there's plenty. Meeting in the temple. Now, you got to ask yourself, why in Russia would they leave this stuff looking as it is? Because they truly appreciate art and they don't have to hide anything. It's not open to the world. So we were talking about. Nah, you, you didn't miss much, the Asia. Um, another book here. This guy made a, a huge book, but they got it hidden. You can get excerpts of it. I've even tried to get PDF. I've been trying to go through the Jewish community. I live in Baltimore. And you get to learn a lot about Judaism in the Jewish community in this, this area here, because there's a lot of them here. I actually worked in a Hebrew geriatric nursing home as a kid, about 11, 12 years old, candy striping, meaning I was on the list of volunteers because my mom worked there. I learned a lot about those folks, who they were and what they were. I was learning. Didn't really understand it, but I learned a lot. What does this say? Indian or Jews? All these books put these things together. Another 30, 30 some odd dollar book. The author's name says Boswell, 1973. Now, when you put those two books together, these people... And these people are the same. So if you understand where I'm going with this, that the Indians are the aboriginals, the indigenous, what we were called before different people paper genocided who we were, Meaning they changed our names. We became bywords, mulatto, all these different names describe the same thing. They changed it and say, oh, mulatto means black and white. No, it doesn't. Mulatto just means a shade of the Negro. Mixed or not, that's just a shade. And when you realize with copper and all the different colors of copper, when you realize bronze and all the colors of bronze, it all adds up. Hidden in plain sight. There's a video that I have on this particular um, playlist and also on my The Hard Truth playlist from Elder Ayil or Ayil Ban Ephraim Ban Yashala. 
called Cam Your Charlotte. It's about 10 minutes long. And it goes into what Hitler said about World War III happening when the people find out that Israel, the state, has been blackmailing the United States for money. Because you got to think, why is the United States paying them millions of dollars a day? Think about that. Why is the United States paying the state of Israel millions of dollars a day when they didn't take part in their Holocaust? They had no part to play in that. Why are they paying millions of dollars to them and not taking care of the people in the United States? Well, I'll tell you why. Because as Hitler said, the true children of Israel are the Negroes here. Now you got to ask yourself, well, the Negroes here, what about the ones that were in Portugal and Spain? Where do you think they are now? They were literally all transported and put back in the same areas, the islands of the sea, the Americas, to encompass United States, Canada, Mexico, isles of the sea, all connected, ring of fire, all connected, Cuba, all connected. They know who you are and where you've been. That's why you've always been a byword. Judah and Ephraim, all together. That doesn't mean all of us are all back, but a big sum of us are here and the rest are scattered. A lot of Judah and a few of Ephraim are the rest are scattered throughout the world to the four corners. Now, how can you be scattered to the four corners in the Bible, but in the world under NASA, which means deceive in Hebrew, it's a globe. You can't get four corners out of a big circle. You just can't. Again, we've been indoctrinated into lies so we can stay following those lies and just say, okay, though, that's what it is. All right, well, let me just work. Let me just buy. Let me do what I need to do. That's all I need to know. And you live in ignorance. We all have done it. Just work to get by just to be happy the whole time being miserable because you don't understand who you are and why you're here. It's sad when you think about it. So you said, so what happened to those people? Well, I'm going to show you a few other books. See, this is what they hide by David E. Stannard, the American Holocaust. So now that you understand the folks that they saw when they first came here, why they thought they were the, the West Indies looked like the regular Indies, because our folks are indigenous all over the world. But our folks that were in the East Indies look like us, the same shade. They don't show them on TV. Mainstream media is not going to show the darker complected people. They show the lighter. Think about the commercials you see today. They just started act showing you darker Negroes in these commercials. But most of the Negroes were light skinned. It's a reason behind that. The lighter they are, the closer the white they are, the more accepted they are. It still happens today. In this book, it talks about that pale horse in Revelations, that pale horse, Revelations is confusing because of Daniel 7 and 25. Even in Revelations, they mixed up between the sixth and seventh seal. So you don't, you threw off the times. They, they threw the heck out of the times. And that it tells you about the trips of what happened with uh, Columbus. When you look at this one here, Bartolomo de la Casas, Devastation in Indies, it tells you just how bad they did the people here. Now, within these two books, you don't get a lot about what we don't get in high school and we darn sure don't get in college, the 61 wards amongst the people here. They never eradicated them. That's the biggest lie. They never eradicated. They didn't kill every indigenous person here. But they did enslave them. They did take away all their knowledge and information of their people, of their God. Who, which for them at the time, when Columbus got here, he realized, wow, these people already know Christ. How do they know Christ? Well, we can't take away their power if we don't take away their words. So they took away their stuff. It was called something different. And I'm going to allude to that. I got one more book I'm going to show you. I actually got a couple.
Columbus and the quest for Jerusalem. In South America, there's a place called Jerusalem. Wherever the Israelites went, wherever the Israelites went, they made a place that reminded them. Remember, they always built altars. So if you always build altars, you're going to build a city. You're going to build a city with a name similar to that of where you came from. The Israelites that came here were descended from the folks that were in Jerusalem. And what you have to understand is one of the high priests that was under King Zedekiah, his name was Isaiah, spelled Isaiah or with an E. His name was changed to Lehi by the Most High for restoration, restoration of the branch of Joseph's seed. Again, we wouldn't know this because we don't know that there were other prophecies in other books like books that were hidden and kept under the altars of Hezekiah. See, the kings kept all the information. They didn't necessarily read it, but they kept the information, but they listened to what the Pharisees and scribes told them instead of reading for themselves. But they did keep the records. Lehi had his sons grab the records before he came to the Americas. And you got folks saying some really ignorant and stupid stuff because they're not thinking. And what am I getting to with this? You got folks that saying, well, how do we get people into the Americas? Did they just go over the burn straight? Did they have to take this other path to get here? They use boats. They use boats. Way back in Noah's day, Most High had him build an ark. What's the ark? A huge boat. So you're going to think people... Hundreds of years later, not going to know how to build boats, given to them the understanding through the Holy Spirit. There wasn't no school to teach them how to build. Our people built because they were given the knowledge through the Holy Spirit. That's what made them a great nation, because the Spirit was with them and gave them that knowledge, that understanding, the skills that they needed. They used boats. They made boats. How did Columbus get over here? Boat. Years later, obviously. But boats. So what makes you think our people didn't do the same thing? Anyway, you got that information from those. There's another book by Milton R. Hunter, Christ in Ancient America. Archaeology from the Book of Mormon. And then you're saying, okay, now you're throwing the Book of Mormon in there. A lot of folks don't realize. What does the Book of Mormon say on it? It tells you that the Native Americans or the Hebrew Israelites are a branch, tribe of Ephraim and the ten tribes of Joseph. Who are the people in charge of that church? LDS church. Europeans, right? But the same thing with Christianity. The same group of people, the Romans, are the same people that are doing stuff now, the Romans, just hidden in plain sight. Who they indoctrinated? All people to think and understand that the books that they have are just for everybody. Now, mind you, in God's will and marvelous plan, it is for everybody to see. But both books are both records of both the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. That was split. A lot of folks don't even realize that Syria <laughs> and the 10 tribes went up against Judah. Tore them boys to shreds. And it was only by the most high that broke all that up and even broke the captivity from Ephraim or the 10 tribes fighting against Judah. And you find, I want to say in Isaiah 2, Isaiah 1, Isaiah 2. Until you get to Isaiah 11, where you start hearing about the um, the rod of iron. But you got to read for yourself. And that's just in the Bible. When you go to Ezekiel chapter 37, 16 to 22, it talks about the Book of Mormon. And it was named in the Bible. It's named. Whew, I got 
pictures that I have to the side that are falling. Excuse me. His name, the stick of Joseph in the hand of Ephraim. The actual name of the Bible is the stick of Judah. So it talks about it. Also, in the stick of Joseph in the hand of Ephraim, lastly named the Book of Mormon, only after, now you understand, Joseph Smith was from the seed of Joseph out of the tribe of Ephraim was a Hebrew prophet. I can show you that too before we go further. Because that book went through different names over a period of time. It did not stay as the stick of Joseph and Hannah Ephraim. And it didn't just go straight to the Book of Mormon. It went through a bunch of names. But I'm going to show you. When you look up on the regular websites for LDS, which is Latter-day Saints, which is under the religion of Mormonism, you don't understand that the true Joseph Smith that's what he looks like. This one, whitewashed version. The one on the other side, the real version. A brother. You see the tassels down there. And it was initially wasn't called the Mormons. And it wasn't called the LDS Church. It was called the Church of God. But once they killed him in 1844... The person that took over for him and started changing things up. He was 33rd degree Mason. European by the name of Brigham Young. Heard of Brigham Young University? Ran by Mormons, right? So just like Christianity, where they took the call to Mithras and mixed it with the scripture, a messianic belief, and formed a religion called Christianity with the Southern Kingdom's records. So did the Mormons take the stick of Joseph in the hand of Ephraim and make the LDS or Mormonism. Both records in Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 22, it talks about putting both books together to give you the fullness of the gospel. And putting them back together forever. Putting all 12 tribes back. How do you do that? You got to read both books. Instead of listening to all the propaganda and the jargon of who and what those folks were, read for yourself. When your parents told you don't have, don't mess around, don't have sex, you're going to have babies. You know, just wait till you get married. Did you listen? What did you go do for yourself to find out about it? Somebody say, don't smoke cigarettes, don't smoke weed, don't do this. You know, it's gonna happen, this is gonna happen to you. Don't drink, you'll get hooked on drinking. What did most of us do? One of those things we did because we wanted to find out for ourselves. We didn't just take somebody's word on it. People that are looking for truth and are curious need to read. Don't wait for somebody to bring you information and spoon feed it to you, get it for yourself. That way, nobody can pull the wool over your eyes. Lest we be aware of Satan's devices. This is a part of it. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. But that comes with repentance and baptism. So if you haven't repented and baptized, you're just like anybody else thinking with an analytical mind. Trust me, I was there. Over analytical to be that. To the T. I would overanalyze stuff so much and it'd be simple sometimes right in front of my face. But I'm looking all around it. A lot of us do that because we don't like being lied to. We don't like lies. We love the truth. We seek for it because we haven't gotten it most of our lives. And we've seen through half the stuff. Bored in school because you realize a lot of it was propaganda didn't mean much. Again, what I was alluding to earlier was that this book, which eventually became this book had other names. The Mayan Bible, the Book of Mott, the Council Book, and the Pope of Vu. So 
So in putting all that together, before we go ahead and get into this particular book here, just a little. Now you understand the minds of Hebrews. Daniel 7 and 25. Likenesses, times, Sabbaths, moons, changing everything, right? Gregorian calendar. The Mayan calendar is a Hebrew calendar. And it was set for the end of the world being 2012. And it showed all types of cataclysms and things that were going to happen to get along there. So they came out with a movie in 2009. Then 2012 came and nothing happened. Why is that? That's because 2012 was really 2002. And 2022, which we're in under the Gregorian calendar, but under the Hebrew calendar, is the end of next month. Again, they changed times, likenesses, and everything. The Gregorian calendar added 10 years to the Hebrew calendar to throw off the times. So the children of men, meaning everyone, wouldn't know what times they were living in. We're living in the last days right now. And when you look at the movie, or if you remember watching the movie once or twice, 2012, there were a lot of things that happened once all the stars in heaven aligned, meaning all the planets aligned straight up. That was the sign in heaven. Then right after that, there were a lot of CMEs coming off the sun. Them CMEs came off the sun, them coronal mass ejections, heated up the volcanoes, changed the weather patterns, or helped to change the weather patterns. You had earthquakes in diverse places, tsunamis going in different places, crazy weather. You had Snow in places where it wasn't snow. Well, what happened in 2020? 2020 in Brazil, what did it do? It was a snow. In July, there was a blizzard, a snow in Brazil. You got places now in Turkey where the, the, the animals were frozen. Like in the, the movie The Day After Tomorrow, animals were frozen, moving, frozen. So mind you, all those things, back to the movie of 2012, all those things happen. But they show you the end of the movie. They don't bring everything. Like, hey, now the Christ comes back. They were giving you likenesses of what is in that prophecy. Again, these are hidden prophecies taken away from us. In the books, it talks about the earthquakes in diverse places. It talks about the whirlwinds, which we know as typhoons, tornadoes, and hurricanes talks about tempest. All these different things are going on right now as we speak in extreme areas. Now, mind you, these things are allowed to happen by the Most High. They might not necessarily become of becoming because of what he's doing, but of his divine will and his insight, what he knew what man would do. It has to do with some of our technology. All the stuff that we're using and that we want to use and for good things is hurting the environment. And causing really bad reactions. So all this stuff is supposed to come. But when you read your Bible, especially in Revelations, what does it tell you? There's a war coming too. First there's peace, then there's war. So if you're not distracted by all these things, you're not, you're not going to see this stuff. And here's why I'm going through this stuff. Because right now they're talking about CRT. Critical race theory. What is that? Nobody's trying to make anybody feel bad. Trying to make them understand that they inherited lies. All of us. So it's not, it's not about you feeling bad. It's about you understanding that it was God's will for these things to happen. And everybody played a role. But everybody has a chance to be saved. Both the children of Israel, who are out of order, and the Gentiles, who didn't necessarily didn't know no better. Because they inherited lies from their father. They ain't hurting nobody. They ain't trying to hurt nobody's feelings. Just tell them the truth. How do your kids feel after they find out that Santa Claus ain't real? I was disappointed as hell. Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy, 
I was disappointed. The whole time you've been putting 50 cents under my pillow. Come on, man. Disappointing. Why? Because the fantasy wasn't real? Because I was being lied to. So here's the thing. With all these books, with all the name changes, with all of it being there and folks not looking, if you don't look, you're not going to see for yourself. If you're going to listen to everything that somebody just spit off to you and don't check for yourself, then you can be misled. Satan leads folks into his chains of captivity by using kind words and a little bit of truth. In this book in particular, it talks about the first natives of America, Black Moors. When did they get here? Well, in the, in the Book of Mormon, or the Stick of Joseph and Hannah Ephraim, it tells you. Right after the fall of Babel, we already had Hebrews that were here. That would have helped make up the Mayan and Aztec empires. But then you had another branch come later. When Lehi brought his family over here. There's so much more information, but you got to read it. These are records that gives you accounts of Christ. What he did when he was in Jerusalem. Because it also has John's information in the book in the Book of Mormon. It talks about John, Isaiah, Daniel. But you wouldn't know that if you didn't read it because somebody told you it's from another religion. It's your records. Just read the book. If you're not a Hebrew, read the book. Read it for yourself. You want to be saved by Christ? You want to be baptized? You want to re truly repent and be baptized? You want to do it under the truth. Not under the guise of a lie. Not under the guise of what the world wants you to do. Because they're leading you out of order. You think you got all these churches on every corner to teach you the truth and lead you the right way? When the Most High said in, what is it, Corinthians or Colossians that he, your body is the holy temple? I am not in a building but in you? keep it holy and don't defile it, it's you. Right now is building a third temple. It's the Christ within us with the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and the spirit of Elias, of Elijah to lead us with the truth, to teach, tell, and preach the truth to others, to not only get them to understand, but to help them into their own salvation. Because they have to, we all have to work our own salvation in fear and trembling. Nobody else is going to do it for you. That pastor sitting in the pulpit, that elder that you talk to, that you believe in so much, they're not going to get you into the kingdom. If they're righteous, they'll show you the way. But you have to do the work. You're not just saved by grace. The part of your grace is the time in between you still alive to finding out the truth and being able to follow in the truth. That's your grace period. When we go back into this book, The One World Tartorians, talks about destroying the identity of the black again more tartorians you got to get past the hijack of the words talks about that so again it's talking about destroying identity how do you destroy somebody's identity the easiest way is what happened to us we were enslaved for 300 years we couldn't read or write why do you think that was so we would not know who we were when you go i want to say into and I'm, I, I'm, I'm about to finish up with this book. When you go into Genesis, when it talks about Abraham, what did it tell Abraham? Genesis chapter 15, starting with verse 13. And he said unto Abraham, know of a surety that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. And shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. That nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Now, I want to, I want to, for critical thinking wise, Abraham had already been through Egypt. He knew where Egypt was. The Hebrews were there for over four hundred and thirty years. They weren't led into captivity in Egypt. 
They were there for already 200 years along with the reign of Joseph coming out of the land of Canaan. So they were already there for 200 some years. They were only in captivity for 230 years for Moses took them out. So that's not the prophecy. But when you go to 1619, let's say the 2019, how many years is that? Is that 400 years? When they steal your identity, do you know who you are and where you come from? If I put you on a boat and send you around the coast, do you know the same land where you came from? Because that's where I'm leading with this. You're about to find out that not only did, uh, what's the dude's name? Alex Haley. Not only did he lie and plagiarize somebody's book named The African and have to pay out $250,000 as a settlement for it. Lying about his way out. Well, this is really about me. No, it's not. You lied. But the transatlantic slave trade was told to you in reverse. You got to remember, Satan always reverses everything that the Most High says or does. It's always done in reverse, right? You got a cross standing upside right. Satan's cross is upside down. Think about that. So the transatlantic slave trade was taught backwards. Most of the children of Israel were here. Remember, the rest was scattered. So most of them were here and then going across being enslaved once they were subdued when old boy came over here, Columbum, when he came over here, it took three trips to get them subdued. In one of those trips, he had to take back information that they never had over there in Jerusalem. You got to remember, Joseph was, was smart. Benjamin was too. But Joseph was extremely intelligent. The people that were over here, they were astronomers they paid attention to the signs of the sky they're the ones that had ancient observatories one of the things that he took back with him to europe to the vatican was a, an observatory that was broken down and reconstructed over there again they changed the times but they knew what the true time was they realized how much stuff had been changed over from where they were and how inaccurate it was the other thing was the records that they had over here not only held the records of what happened to the Jews in Jerusalem, which are true Jews, were from Judea and not a religion called Judaism. And Judea was a southern kingdom, which was left at the time that Christ was born into was who? Those folks were Judah, the head tribe with Benjamin and the Levites. Who had no what? No inheritance. So what happened with this? Well, their records were also a part of the Northern tribes records. They had their records too. Everybody kept records. So when you find out that they searched these lands when they first came in Columbus, every area that they went to, because remember Columbus never even went into North America. It was down in Hispaniola. Everywhere that they went to, everywhere they went, and they went captive, they sent the missionaries to go in and, and disarm the people with their knowledge and understanding and try to teach them another Christ that they already knew, was this record. They were looking for all of this record. See, the Northern tribe had both records, and they split them. That's what most people don't understand and don't know. The northern tribe, the 10 tribes, had the records from the southern tribe. And when they came to the Americas, they took all of them and they split them. They were going to teach from the southern tribe stuff, but put the northern tribes in a whole nother religion that most people won't go into. And that's what happened. I did do another lesson that actually goes into that and tells you about the fullness of the gospel, which gives you all the information on the gospel of Christ as he spoke it, spoken of in Daniel's, um, excuse me, um, Isaiah 11, 11 talks about, um, I want to say 2 Nephi chapters 10, 11, um, and 12 and 13. 
that goes right along with Matthew 5, 6, and 7. So in this book, page 75, because you might be able to get the PDF online, you might even be able to go to onenationonepower.com website under forums and go to information and be able to download the PDF and read for yourself. Or download the PDF, have it sent to FedEx Kinko's and have it printed out. And you have to pay like me, I don't know, 20 to 35 dollars for that. If not, just get it on Amazon. Anyway, I'm just going to read this to you. So the story goes, and it called another huge NWO lie, the transatlantic slave trade out of Africa. Some 12.5 12, 12 million Africans were taken from their homes, forced to board slave ships that were destined for the new world. 10.7 million people survived the horrors of the Middle Passage between 1526 and 1866, only to end up in bondage on sugar, rice, cotton, and tobacco plantations throughout the Americas and the Caribbean. The transatlantic slave trade is the largest forced migration in history. Now, what does it say next? Black people are indigenous to the Americas. Black Native Americans are not a result of the so-called Red Indian mixing with slaves. The so-called Red Indian comes from mixing with the European colonists and the Asians that were in America before Columbus. Now, mind you, with that, we still had folks from Jafef that migrated over here, too. They were in outlying areas. And they actually lived peacefully among us until Columbus came. And when Columbus came, in order to help him subdue in these wars, our people, they gave them tokens and gifts to break the treaties that they had with us. Now, you got to say to yourself, break treaties? Yeah, we had bonds with them. We traded with them and everything. We lived together as brother and sister, because guess what? Japheth is the brother of Shem. So they cousins, they family. Those folks knew that then. These people, us now, most folks don't realize we're literally all related in one form or another. We're all related, regardless of what we look like on here. We all related. We all bleed the same. Right? But our skin color has changed based on the areas that we were over thousands of years, hundreds and thousands of years. All the times are thrown off. So we can't sit here and say, oh, well, we know this. We know. No, man, we got to stop with the ignorance. Why do you think it tells us not to vex the stranger when we were the strangers in their land? Talking about the Egyptians. That's another nation. Just because their color might be close to the, the Negroes of America, it's another nation. They're Gentiles, just like the Europeans coming from Japheth, are Gentiles, just another nation. We can't get stuck up on skin color. It's, you're looking for the character, the content of someone's character, their heart, who they truly are, tells you about that person. Their spirit tells you who they are. Your interaction with them tells you who they are. Not this. This don't mean nothing. I found out of the military real quick. You know how people say, oh, you just get up with the click in the groups and you watch those folks? Some of the folks that were in the higher up areas in the military that looked my color or darker, when I gravitated towards them and asked them for help and understanding, spit in my face. Told me, yeah, I got you. I'm going to help you put together this important package to change your rate of what you're doing, you can go from building bombs to, to saving lives. You're going to be able to change that, and I'm going to help you start Monday morning. Dude told me that on Friday. Saturday, he had a party for changing from enlisted to officer and had going through a school. He left for the school on Sunday. I showed back up in his office on Monday and said, oh, he gone already. Chief Rockton already dipped. He got a school and everything. I'm like, man, that's not what he just told me. Felt betrayed. It be your own kind. In that scene, what did I find out? The folks that wound up helping me, helping to save my tail in the military, when folks didn't like the fact that I told the truth and that I went by the book as I was taught to follow by the book and not what somebody was saying and not go against orders and what's right and what's wrong, they were Europeans. They were white folk. There's another shade of me, as far as I'm concerned. 
Save my butt. Love him to death. So when I see people, I don't see color. I see spirit. So when I'm telling you all of these things and I'm showing you these things to go look for yourself, this is for everybody. This isn't for somebody that just look like me. I, I, I definitely want to make that a point. Why do I want to do that? Because guess what? I've seen a lot of my family. And they range from the color of this shirt to a lot my color to some as light as this color on this book. As far as looking, you know, mixed to some that are literally look at you and they're European and you can't tell that they're black. So, yes, I've been treated poorly by folks that are of European descent. And I've also been treated greatly more from people that look like me. The problem I always had as a child and even as an adult, being a tough man, not wanting to show it, I cared about them regardless. I loved them regardless. Didn't like what they did. Didn't like what, especially what they may have done to affect me. But one of the things I learned over the, the years is just to love them regardless. If you got to love them from afar, love them from afar. If you don't can't say nothing to them because it's going to piss them off and you have problems with them, then so be it. But you still love them. The most high still love us, and we've been some of the wickedest people on this earth. We can't blame somebody who was brought up by the most high, raised up by the most high, to chastise us because our ancestors gave up Christ. Like they were wicked before Christ even got here. Why do you think he, he when he said, You you vipers? People think he was talking to Romans who were all European. Romans and Greek were of all colors. The people that were leaders of the church were just rich people that looked like this. That kicked out all the poor people. No different than what happened in these churches here. When in the name of God, we come into the, this country, we're going to take over and get rid of all the heathens and purge it. Dumb diverses. That's the one thing that's not talked about in a lot of what I'm showing because you're going to have to read it. The Devastation of the Indies and... The American Holocaust by David E. Standard and this one by Bartolome de la Casas. When you read these books, you're going to see they use dumb diverses, doctrine given to them by the Romans, by the priests to go across the world. It wasn't just America. Portugal, Spain, expulsion of the Jews. Negril, Negro. It was used to exterminate, eradicate indoctrinate and enslave the children of Israel. Now, the name of the guy who did the paper genocide, Melville Herskowitz. Look him up. Charge of the Smithsonian, when you get certain spots, you can make everything happen. How do you find out? It's not by these blood tests, not by these, these, these spit tests. You got to look at records. You got to go into the Dawes rolls. And what you'll find out about your family, there's no manifest for most of our people that came over here from no ship. There's birth certificates, death certificates, marriage licenses that say Indian, that have your ancestor's name on them. They didn't change those, but they changed everything else. All other ledgers, county ledgers, censuses. The initial censuses that they were using here in the U.S. was to change the names of the people. The $5 Indians were those who came after the few true European and Asian mixed people or red people that were here along with us. And they mixed in with them by paying $5 to get on the rolls and follow what they were getting. So now if you understand, our people were a lot of certain things because they knew who we were. Andrew Jackson knew he wasn't just killing Indians. He knew he was slaying Jews. And like always, make a treaty, break a treaty. That book that I showed you, Elder Ayil brought that book out. And he had an actual the treaty signed by Andrew Jackson. These are the people It's going to be cool with them. We're not going to hurt them or nothing. Turn right around and start slaying them. He was called the Indian killer.
Honor me with your mouth, but not with your actions. If they're going to do that to Christ, they're going to do that to his people. If they're going to hate Christ, they're going to hate his people. If they're going to hang Christ in a tree, they're going to hang his people. I'm not sure if that's Acts 5 and 25, where it talked about how they slew him in a tree. But we don't read the stuff, we don't get it. But again, with this one, it talks about the Americans were black people. They were not brought here on ships. It goes over a period of 300 years. It's fair to say that only 60,000 slaves were transported annually to the Americas, or has the transportation slaves to the Americas been one big myth? The largest seagoing vessel carried 400 slaves, but not all the ships were that large. The time of the passage was three to four months. This means 200 vessels, ships per year, would have to travel carrying 300 people. One ship could make three passages per year. The transatlantic slave trade database says there were 1,100 to 1,400 voyages made over their 300-year period. If that is the case, and each ship carried 400 people, and the total number would be 560,000 Africans were transported, it still doesn't add up. When we don't do the math, we can listen to everything somebody tells us. But this is the math coming from off their website, and it's less than 600,000 people. Where they get millions at? Because they were here. The millions were here. They killed them on paper. Oh, they slayed us. Chopped off feet, hobbled us. Tore open the bellies of the women that were carrying child. Let the dogs eat our people, eat our kids. Do our kids the alligators for alligator bait. When they weren't getting gold that were around here in the mines and stuff. That when the Americas, they go to the chieftain of the village, get his wife, rape his wife in front of him, and tell him, you better get our stuff, get us more gold. Oh, it's a lot of stuff. See, we're told about, let's just say the numbers are encouraged or embellished. When we talk, we're talked about what happened to the folks over in Germany with the Nazis. Again, a distraction that gets you away from. The American Holocaust and the atrocities that they suffered. And if we was really worried about what happened to the folks that happened in Nazi Germany, why would we take 1,200 of their scientists and defect them over here to the Americas to work for us at all our major universities and NASA itself? Why would we do that? Why would we use some of the things and tactics that they use on those people at those concentration camps on our own people? Why? Why would we put fluoride in the water here when we knew fluoride over there was used to make the people docile so they wouldn't fight back against everything that was happening to them? They just stayed docile and didn't fight. Put it in the water. Put it in toothpaste. Well, why can't you put concentrated amounts on your teeth, but you can't swallow it? Because your teeth going to absorb it and it's going to go through. It's what causes people to have, really causes them to have issues with their gums, the sensitivity, and it stays longer in the teeth, in the, in the dentin and in the enamel, and then filtrates into the blood system that way to go along with the water, to go along with the toothpaste, which most kids eat toothpaste. Fluoride is rat poison. How did I learn that? I learned that as a kid. I lived in the ghetto, Drew Park Lake Drive and North Avenue, right over top of an exterminator it's called Scatterbug. I would go downstairs to get uh, mice traps and um, uh, roach bait traps, and they had all types of pamphlets that I used to read. I loved reading. So I used to read. Found that out. Found out some of the medicines that you take. Some of the stuff that you can take for mental health, which obviously we know throughout the Bible, it talks about when the folks would go through depression and mental health issues. But a lot of times it was spirits that were driving you mad. Either the most high sent them because of your ignorance and your, and, and your wickedness or something that you did stupid, like going after other idols and into witchcraft, wrought those spirits upon you. Happened to Nebuchadnezzar. Drove him mad where at least for over a year he was eating grass and walking around like he was an animal. Lost his kingdom and everything. 
when he got it right, he came back. The Most High took care of him, but he still lost his kingdom again and was slain. This, this time he was saved. Got to read your Bible. So back with this, read this book. One World Tartarians. If you don't want to read, you don't want to, I'll wait before I get in this other stuff. Read this book. When I tell you, it tells you so much stuff. It tells you about how California used to be its own island. It shows you the one of the old maps where it's hard to get across from. You got to go on other YouTube pages. You got to go doing different studies with old maps. You got to find old maps. Old maps cost a lot. And it's hard to get them. You have to either get them in PDF form. You get them in slide form, usually online. You got to go on sites and pay for them. California used to be its old island. Part of that gold rush, what did they do with all the dirt and all the sediment? All in that area? They filled in the area. And then also it closed in on its own. With earthquakes and everything. You'll find out in this book that Queen Califia used to be spelled with a K. K-A-L-I. Fornia. That there was an island of women. Warrior women, where they met up with the men, they did have relations, and all the women, the girls were taken back to the island. The boys were taken back with the men to the other areas. Until one day the men came, destroyed their kingdom, and made them subservient to them. But there was that. What does cow mean? What does K-A-L mean? It means black. I may have said this before, but we have a lot of stuff that be sitting in our faces that he just throw in our faces and play with us. We've all watched Superman. We all know that his Kryptonian name is Kal-El. Well, I just told you what K-A-L means, what Cal means, right? It means black. What does his last name say? L, right? What does that mean? Black God. What gives him power? The sun. It's been a lot of stuff just sitting in our faces this whole time. But we, we've been ignorant. We've been ignorant of Satan's devices. I want you guys to read these particular books for yourself. There's a lot of information about them. One of the things it tells you is that who the Toltecs, the Mayans, the Aztecs were. What does the word say? They were all black Moors. Remember what I said about the hijack. More is just another way of saying Negro. When you look at the movie The Black Knight with uh, Martin Lawrence, they kept calling him a Moor, a Moor, a Moor, a Moor. Because he was Negro. Because he was black. What is this telling you? They were all black. I already had the book that came before Columbus. Again, this is more information. What we do know is that the Olmecs and the Olmecs were of Canaanite blood, which meant they were uh, fallen angels or Nephilim, giants. Moctezuma. If, that, if you heard all these things, you understand that? Who Moctezuma was and what he looked like? He was copper colored. Again, this information's here. It's here for you, but we got to look through it. The name of the Indian tribes... The Washita of Louisiana, Midwest, the Yamase, Southeast, the Iroquois, the Cherokee, the Blackfoot, Peacoat, the Mohegans, the Black Californians, the Derenite, all of them folks, 500 nations, copper colored. Not red, not Asian, and European mixed. This is who you are. Black people here in the United States, you need to wake up. If the places that you're going for education aren't telling you the truth, why are you there? Go along to get along, to feel good about yourself, for somebody to raise you up, for you to stand on a pulpit and, and tell people and have them follow you. Is that what Christ said? Follow me? He said, I'm the straight gate. Why? Because I'm teaching you repentance and baptism. 
I'm teaching you to follow the laws that God gave us. By following these basic commands, you follow everything. The two basic commandments. You follow everything. Hebrews. Because I'm going to stop there on that one. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8 through 11. Let's go there. For finding fault with them, he says, behold, the day comes, says Yahuwah, when I will make a renewed covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. The house of Israel are the 10 tribes. The children of Israel encompasses all 12. So the house of Israel and then the house of Judah. Renewing a covenant with all 12 tribes, not according to the covenant, verse 9, that I made with their forefathers or their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant and regarded them not, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. You, I will put my Torah into their mind and write it in their hearts, and I will be their God. And they shall be to me a people. Now, verse 10 says a lot that we skip over. What does verse 10 say? One more time for you. Pay attention. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. With the house of Israel. Not the children, but the house of Israel. I will put my Torah into their mind. I will write it in their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be to me a people. What do they do after that? Verse 11. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, no God, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Why is he saying that? Oh, we're going to finish this up. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their Torahless deeds. I will re remember no more. In that he says of a new covenant, he has made the first old. Now that which decays and waxes old is ready to vanish away. What don't we teach? We don't teach what we were taught by the Pharisees and the scribes. What does Christ tell us to teach? What did he tell his disciples? If you're going to follow me, you're going to follow the things that I do and the things that I say because of the Father, because of the Father's commandments through me. Teach the gospel of Christ. Teach the doctrine of Christ. Teach loving your neighbor as yourself. Teach loving the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. You don't have to be in a church. You don't have to be in a temple, a synagogue, a mosque. Just love your creator. Yes. The right way, to follow the right ways. And not what was being taught at that time in the churches of Jerusalem. That's why Christ was slain, because the Pharisees, the scribes, the rich, the elite were getting their feelings hurt because the people were learning the truth. And they were being freed spiritually from those lies that had them paying these folks basically extra taxes. That's what tithing is nowadays. You're getting taxed again. And if you don't think about it, you're getting taxed by Caesar twice. The government's already getting you, actually three times. The government's already getting you for state, and they're getting you for federal. And now these churches are lying to you about tithing because you don't know Deuteronomy 14, and you just hear them say Malachi 3 and 8, talking about robbing the storehouses of God. Well, guess what's supposed to be in the storehouses? Food. What is that food for? To distribute amongst the poor. Are the people in church poor? Most of them are. But they're taking money from them instead of food. And they're not redistributing it to the people. They're taking the money. They're keeping it. They're building up the houses. They're, they're financing what they need to do. Their jets. 
their homes, their cars, their family's education, their clothing, their thousand dollar Armani suits. And they tap dancing in front of you, giving you a show, giving you an emotionalism with one or two scriptures out of context and that you following now. And you worship in man and the doctrine of man, which is the doctrine of the devil, because it leads you into captivity and away from Christ. Who is the straight gate? When people say leads you from Christ, we know that Christ isn't the father, but the father's in him and the Holy Spirit's in him. The Godhead. If you follow me, I am in the father, the father is in me and I am in you. This is the struggle that we in, but we lose these prophecies. We lose this understanding, not just by not reading, but just following blindly. So I told you about these books, the Gentile books, or books that aren't scriptural, scriptural, that has historic information that tells you about the people here in these lands, what happened to them, what they looked like, and who they were. I told you about the stick of Joseph in the hand of Ephraim that comes in Ezekiel chapter 37 especially in verses 16 through 22. I'm going to read from you a book of Moses. Remember I said earlier about Moses and Abraham. If you look in the Book of Mormon, it's, a, it's a, a threefold. The one I showed you that says, and that one fell too, oh well. It says on there, Doctrines and Covenants in the Pearl of Great Price. The Pearl of Great Price actually gives you information and a few pictures. And diagrams, but it gives you it gives you a book of Moses and a book of Abraham. The oh, reason why that was taken away from the mainstream, because it lets you know that you are a spirit, you are a receptacle of spirit, or your place where God made you as a spirit, and you had to grow to a certain level of maturity, understanding, and knowledge before it was wiped back away from you when you came here in your mortality in your flesh. That veil is this. Once your spirit became one with the flesh upon your birth, everything that you had learned in heaven was gone away because you got to go on probation and learn for yourself which kingdom of glory you want to enter. With the three different kingdoms of glory, you'll find that out in the, in the book called The Sealed Portion which is the book that was spoken of in Daniel chapter 12, verses four, seal up the book, O Daniel, until the time of the end, knowledge will go to and fro and knowledge will increase. But you got to read that book. It's called the sealed portion, the last Testament of Jesus Christ. And there's some bones in that, just like there's bones in the Bible, meaning there's things in that that should not be in there. But if you're following with the Holy spirit, you're letting get guided by the Holy spirit, meaning you always pray for your, your flesh to decrease and for your spirit to increase for the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you in understanding so that when you read it, you get the understanding that Christ wants for you, that God wants you to have. And you can see the, the truth through the lies. You think you use the Holy Spirit just for scripture? You use it for daily living and everything that you, everything you read, every aspect of your life, you let it lead you and guide you. And you won't fall for Satan's devices. Now, one of the books that they found under... Um, King Zedekiah's altar and also later under King Laban's altar was a sealed book of Moses. It was renamed under the LDS, the sealed book of Mormon, but you can find it as a sealed book of Moses on Amazon for like 30 some dollars. I'm going to read you one of the prophecies of Joseph in Egypt talking about Moses and talking about Joseph Smith, one of the last Hebrew prophets of that time. Every dispensation of time, he raised up prophets to go warn the people. He would come to them, even by having angels come to them, by giving them visions. But it would normally, most times, there would be righteous people. Some of the times, folks weren't acting righteous. And he sent the prophet to them to straighten them out, and they came out of it, like Lehi, who was Isaiah at that time. His name was Isaiah. There's more than one Isaiah, just like there's more than one Joseph. It's like more than one Jacob, more than one John. But each dispensation of time, 
our people have prophets to warn them of the coming prophecies that were going to occur. It was going to be the devastation of them if they didn't return back to the laws or commandments of the Most High. This is chapter 12 of the, the, the sealed book of Moses. Joseph prophesies in Egypt that Moses will deliver Israel from Egyptian captivity. God reveals to Joseph that a branch of his descendants will be taken to a distant land. And from his loin, two seers and a mouthpiece will come to the aid of a Moses from the Lord will raise up in the last days. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Lord, have visited me and I have obtained a promise from him that Lord God shall raise up a just branch from the loins of Jacob, a prophet, not the promised descendant. And behold, this prophet will deliver my people out in the days of their bondage. And it shall come to pass that they shall be scattered again, and a branch shall be broken and brought to a far country beyond the sea. Nevertheless, they shall be remembered in the covenants of the Lord when the Messiah shall come. For it will be revealed to them in the last days in the spirit of power, and he shall bring them out of darkness into the light, from hidden darkness, from captivity to eternal freedom. And a seer, God will lift from the fruit of my loins, who shall be a seer, chosen to restore the ordinances of the house of Israel in this far land. And the God of my father said unto me, Joseph, a chosen seer, will I raise up out of the fruit of thy loins, and he shall be highly esteemed. And I will command him to do a work for the fruit of thy loins. For whosoever shall accept his words and be baptized because of them shall be numbered as a part of the house of Ephraim. Hebrews chapter 8. Verse 10, house of Israel. From whom I have separated from his brothers. Therefore, a descendant of Joseph, the brother of Manasseh, to whom he shall be taken first to this place, far beyond the great waters, and they shall be a remnant branch of the house of Jacob. And he will bring you to know the covenants which I have made with your fathers. And he shall perform whatever work I command him. Most of the books that I've shown you are between $30 and $40 if you pay for it. If you get them in PDF, you can get them for free. But it's up to you to read them. Now, I'm going to read these last two things, and then we're going to finish up. So in the Stick of Joseph and Hand of Ephraim, it talks about these folks. One of the things you learn is that the prophet Isaiah, who was a high priest, who once he had someone by the name of Zenos and Zenoch, who were prophets, come to him and get on him, as well as the rest of the folks, the prophets, or high priests that were at the church of Jerusalem. Once he got on them and told them, y'all doing wrong, y'all leading the people astray, the church is out of order. Lehi already knew he was out of order, but he was going along with it because he was getting paid. But they touched the spirit, the spirit of God touched him, and he's like, I can't do this no more. And then like they always did, the prophets of God were killed by the people when they were going to be slain, Lehi jumped in front of the sword. Like, no, nah, I don't do that. Eventually, he got kicked out of the church and they were still slain. Lehi had a change of heart. You're going to find out a lot of folks, especially in this the, um, this book called the Book of Mormon now, but which is a stick of Joseph and Hannah Ephraim, did the same thing. Either they were doing what they felt was righteous at the time, but it wasn't really. God came to them, had them change their ways, and they led the people the righteous way. There's one called Alma that was doing it as well. Alma kind of remind me a little bit of Paul. Slaying the saints of the Most High and then turn around and trying to save them, grant them salvation. But Lehi had sons. Lemuel, Sam, Laman, and Nephi. Laman was one of his older brothers. Or Laman was one of his older brothers. Always fighting against him saying we're just going to stick with the law of Moses. We're not worrying about the promise to send it. Nephi was visited by an angel of the Most High and was telling him about Christ has come 
to Jerusalem, what he would be teaching, and then how he would be slain or crucified, how he would come back, ascend, and come back to his people in Jerusalem, in which they were left with the spirit. The disciples didn't have the Holy Spirit before until after the resurrection of Christ. And then when he went up, John 10 and 16 says, I have other uh, sheep who are not of this fold. To them I must go to also. Before, before I actually read these last two things for you, I'll read what that's supposed to say. Remember, in the Bible, they changed a lot of stuff to take out of context so that people wouldn't understand and know what they were, and they could constantly be led by people standing in front of them. In Nephi, 3rd Nephi, chapter 16, it says, Jesus will visit others of the lost sheep of Israel in the latter days. The gospel will go to the Gentiles and then to the house of Israel. The Book of Mormon went first to the Gentiles. And now it's back with us and it's been with us since 2019. A lot of us have been into it, into this book and got the understanding. The Lord's people shall see eye to eye when he brings back Zion. The very first verse says, and verily, verily, again, um, uh, compared with John 10 and 16, verily, verily, I say unto you that I have other sheep which are not of this land, neither of the land of Jerusalem. Neither in any parts of that land round about whither have been to minister. Nowhere around Jerusalem, nowhere around that area, he had other people. He had other sheep, right? When he told you I had other sheep who are not of his fold, it's other sheep who are not of that land. Why was that? Because it tells you that the 10 tribes, the house of Israel, went into captivity 600 BC. He still had other people. He had 10 whole tribes. Other than the two he was born into that he had to show himself to. So what does that mean? When Christ ascended from Jerusalem, he descended to the Americas, to the Nephites. The Nephites came under Nephi, who was acting righteous, following behind Christ. And the other ones were going back to the old law. And following the people, which were the Lamanites or Laman's descendants. And then you were also, whether they were Nephites or whoever, out of those children of Lehi, if you follow Nephi and their teachings about Christ, you were considered a Nephite. If you follow Laman and wanted to do what he wanted to do, you were considered a Lamanite. The people were mixed. It wasn't just one person and another person and all their descendants, the people were mixed on what they thought and what they did. So they were all mixed up in between the two. But this tells you a lot. This is the reason why these books were split up because it gives you a better understanding. Lastly, it gives you a written account upon the plates that were taken from the plate of Nephi. And we're going to go just a couple of paragraphs in. Um, this is at the very beginning of the book before you get into the actual scripture. Wherefore, it is an abridgment of the record of the people of Nephi and also the people of Laman or the Lamanites written to the Lamanites who are a remnant of the house of Israel and also to the Jew and the Gentile written by way of com commandment and also by the spirit of prophecy and of revelation written to come forth by the gift and power of God into the interpretation thereof. Sealed by the hand of Moroni, which was the son of Mormon, who was a Hebrew prophet here, who was hiding the plates because the Lamanites were trying to kill him and take him. No different than what the Greeks did to the Jews in Jerome, Jer excuse me, Jews in, in Jerusalem. They couldn't wait to take over the temple, take all the precious things to include the scripture so they could do what? Lay their faces into it. Y'all want a God? We'll give you a God. This is what he looks like. Picture that white Jesus that we see in churches. Where do you think you get it from? That's not new. That picture is actually a, a picture of uh, of uh, Cesare Borgia, the, the, the gay son of a pope who also slept with his sister and killed his brother. Very wicked guy. He was also a... Um, 
a good strategist, a war strategist, or general. Again, this is stuff you have to read. So what it tells you further in the book, in the book of Ether, it's also a record of the people of Jared who were scattered at the time of the Lord, confounded the language of the, the people when they were building the tower to get to heaven, the Tower of Babel, which is to show unto the remnant of the house of Israel what great things the Lord have done for their fathers, and that they may know the covenants of the Lord, and that they are not cast off forever, and also to the convincing of the Jew and the Gentile that Jesus is the Christ, the eternal God, manifesting himself unto all nations. And now, if there are faults, there are mistakes of men, wherefore condemn not the things of God, that ye may be found spotless at the judgment seat of Christ. Why did it say that last sentence? So when you, you read and you see these things and you see the differences between this book, you compare it to the Bible, you can see the difference between what was taken out and what wasn't. Lastly, I'll just read you a small part of the introduction, and then we'll be, we'll be done with this lesson. The Book of Mormon is a volume of Holy Scripture comparable to the Bible. It's a record of God's dealings with the ancient inhabitants of the Americas and contains, as does the Bible, the fullness of the everlasting gospel. What does that tell you? What was taken out of the Bible? The fullness of the gospel. We don't have that in the Bible. We have his words abridged, meaning there were some taken out. In the sealed portion, you have Matthew 5, 6, and 7, what Christ was really talking to and teaching his disciples without taking the words away, which tells you to follow the commandments of the Most High. Why would you teach the disciples who you knew were going to be after, here after you, after you were slain, why would you teach them to follow the laws or the commandments of the Most High? Because that's what they were going to do after his life was given. He gave his life. So those those commandments and those laws that he was telling those people to teach wasn't supposed to just be during the time that he was alive, but after he passed. So if he's telling you to follow the commands of the Most High at that point in time, at what point in time does he tell you not to follow it anymore? He's not. And that's where you have stuff that you can understand that was mixed in the Bible that shouldn't be in there. There's absolutely no way that we should be taught a Hebrew Bible talking about Hebrew people translated from Hebrew to Latin or Greek. That's where you lose the translation. That's why you hear Testament instead of covenant. Because it's translated in Greek and not Hebrew to English, as it should be. So with that being said, it's a Hebrew Bible with Hebrew records. If it's translated properly in the Hebrew, you get the true understanding and context. That's the reason that it was done that way and constantly edited and made new versions here, amplified this, that, whatever. You are not supposed to add to or take away or you will be accursed. But they did it. Why? Because they didn't care. And the people that are teaching from it, they know that. They know it. A lot of times they're getting caught up in, well, I just want to do the right thing. And if I just follow it this way, it'll still be good. No. Lightness shouldn't be in the dark. They're not supposed to go hand in hand. Darkness and light do not go together. I cannot sit down at the table with the devil and get up unscathed. I did a lesson on 501c3. That will help you understand the reason why they're bound to do it once they sign their contract with the state or with the government. I'm going to show you these books if you want to take a snapshot of them to get them for yourself. I would pray that's what you do. If not, go on onenationonepower.com. Go under the forms and under information. You may be able to get a lot of these books in PDF form. 
One of the biggest things I want to say to you here, I don't care if you're European, you're Asian, Negro, you know you're a Hebrew Israelite. If you haven't been baptized, you're not repenting for your sins, and you're not going to return to the commandments and the laws of the Most High, which is the new covenant, which means that not only are his people saved in that covenant, but that branch, those people that are woven in and grafted in are all other nations as well. If you haven't done those things, he's no respecter of persons. There's many people my color, as well as anybody else's color of their skin, that's going to be in the pits of hell because of their pride and their ignorance. So I'm pleading with you today. Because as of some of the information I gave you about this really being 2012, which means this is the last year coming up at the end of March on the Hebrew calendar, it's the last year. We in the half a time, as spoken of in Daniel. We in the half a times. Repent for your wickedness, for your sins, the sins of your ancestors. Repent. Come back to the covenant, the new covenant, come back to your creator. Repent and get baptized under the order of Melchizedek, which is spoken of in Genesis, who Abram was initially baptized under when he broke bread and had wine with Melchizedek, king of Salem. He was a king and a priest. Melchizedek was Shem. That priesthood came off the earth, came back onto the earth under the holy order of the Son of God when Christ was born out of the line of Judah. Also in Hebrews, it tells you if the Aaronic priesthood or the Levitical priesthood was perfect, then why would it need the Melchizedek order after it? The order of Melchizedek is what you want to be baptized under. You ask your priests, your preachers, your elders, your pastors, your apostles. You ask them, what order are you under? What priesthood? Ask them that question if you still want to stay in your church and see what it will be answered. But you want to be baptized. You want to be immersed in water. You want to come up with the spirit of the Holy Ghost baptized in fire. On fire for the Most High on fire with the spirit of Elijah and the Ruach HaKodesh to seek out the truth, to find the truth, to tell the truth, to teach the truth, the truth, to preach the truth. This is what you want. And this is what I want for everybody. When I was finally baptized into the truth and understanding, when I tell you I was on fire, it was a calling that I felt as a kid that I ran away from and was scared of because I didn't want to do wrong by the people. I was worried about not only the people, but how I would hurt my family and hurt myself eternally. Because what he said was, if if you're a ravening wolf, if you're going to lead away my people, your damnation is going to be worse. I didn't want to do what I saw. And I had to eventually come to the understanding that I had to do what was written by scripture, by what Christ did. And step out on faith and do what I'm here for. And as many of you right now that are doing those things, that are trying to talk to their family members, trying to talk to their co-workers, sending messages, sending scriptures, sending memes through social media, that's evangelizing. That's doing what Christ wants you to do as his disciples, those who follow him. Whether you have a, a, a good, say, a good voice or you feel uh, you don't feel uh great about standing in front of people i used to stand in front of thousands of people teaching rules morals things that had to do with troop movement things that had to do with uh chemical biological radiological um neurological um environmental warfare medical stuff some of that stuff was good but if it don't get me or them into the kingdom of heaven, was it really any, was it worth anything? It gave me experience because of things that I went through when I went overseas, 
I came back with an anxiety where I didn't want to be in front of people. I'm step. I've been stepping out on faith since he basically told me, preach my doctrine. Tell the truth. You've been wanting to learn the truth and know the truth. Now that you know it, what you going to do with it? You don't think there's times where I felt the anxiety come and I just pray in my heart, Holy Spirit, just continue to lead me and guide me so I can say and do what you want me to be. Let me be your vessel for the words of the Most High, the Spirit of the Most High to speak through me. I have to be humble and meek just to be able to, to, to say these things in front of you guys, to show you some of the stuff that I, I, I can. You don't think I have people that have looked at my videos and scrutinized me? whether through my family members or my own family and friends, I can't worry about that. I can't care about that. I care about their soul salvation, not their feelings and their emotions based off of what they were indoctrinated with. And neither should you. If you are like me or even stronger in the spirit, meaning you don't care what anybody say and you're going to get the word out to everybody. If you hobnobs with them, bump them in Walmart, you want to tell them about Christ. Then by all means, tell them. If the spirit is put on you to do it, then you follow the spirit and not your flesh. And it doesn't matter what color somebody is showing you, but it matters their character and their heart. Love your brother as yourself. Or love thy neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. If you're seeking baptism, go onto the website, One Nation onepower.com slash baptisms. And you can find someone in your area nationally and internationally that can help baptize you and get you baptized under the order of Melchizedek. At this point in time, I'm going to finish up with this lesson. I want you guys to know I love y'all. I wanted to show you all these books, give you a chance to see these books where you can get them or you can screenshot so that you can know what to download, at least write down the names. There's no specific order, but everything that I talked about, I didn't want to write just in the uh, the notes. To me, this is the most important book, so I'm going to show it to you first. This is the book that tells you about the times being changed. It tells you about what Christ really taught. It gives you the fullness of the gospel as in Isaiah 11, 11, and also Matthew 5, 6, and 7, in the very rear of the book. It gives you the information that was taken away also from the Book of Mormon. It gives you the same things that were said by John, by Daniel, by Moroni, the brother of a jerk, who I believe is Aki. It gives you a lot of the prophets. This is the sealed book that is in Daniel 12 and 4 most important thing you can get now because it gives you all the context and understanding of what you need to know in these last days. The Stick of Joseph in the Hand of Ephraim. You can even get it in this format. I personally, because you get a lot more information with doctrines and covenants and a pearl of great price to go along with the Book of Mormon. I will get this. They have it in a much bigger size, bigger, bigger book, bigger writing for about 30 bucks. I got the small book version, which is the reason why I got these. I got to read through. My sons have the larger size. The last one, and again, I got the old stuff that was printed out. Um, Dodge the hijack of the name. But it's, this, it's renamed the Sealed Book of Mormon. You can get the new book, which is about as small as this black outline here, called the Sealed Book of Moses. It's got the right name on it. And it's the same thing. You can get this version, the, the um, PDF version, off of One Nation, um, OnePower.com forward slash forums and information and you can get that that's what i did I, and i had someone actually uh, um a uh, guy who baptized me brother mike or little mike um and his wife katya 
got me that version. I want to say as a baptism present. And I, I really much appreciate it because I learned a lot in reading that. Um, as a nation and as a family, we do as much as we can to help each other out. And they don't realize how much they help me um, with that. Um, so I, I, I just want to say I appreciate it. I didn't get it off the site. They got it for me. I know how to go back there. But they did it for me, and I really appreciate that from them. Again, that's called the sealed book of Moses. If you need other understanding for you or to teach others, this is a book that you can get. You cannot get the Russian icons for less than $1,500. You can get this book, Undeniable, by Dante Forson. And it has all the same pictures and understanding and knowledge in it. For you to be able to show folks who they really are. They have a hard time believing you. The American Holocaust by David E. Stannard talks about what happened to our people that were here when Columbus showed up, that pale white horse. A lot of prophecies in the Bible have already come to pass. Some of them are dual prophecies where they happen in more than one dispensation of time. In Revelations, that pale white horse, these people that were over here, you got to think about it. They left Jerusalem 600 BC. When they got here, there were very few people that didn't look like them. And the folks that did look as far as the Asian and, um, and European folks at that time, they were of a darker color. They weren't as you see them now. Devastation of the Indians by Bartolome uh, de la Casas. First hand account of a priest that was watching what was going on during the time. And when he saw how inhumane it was, he started writing about it. Five hundred nations tells you about the different tribes. Again, we split up with different names, more bywords. We didn't go by Hebrew Israelites. We went by Iroquois, Choctaw, Yamase, Blackfoot. Again, a little bit of more information. Indian or Jews by Lynn Glazer. That's a brief part of this part here by Manasseh ben Israel, the hope of Israel. Uh, you see on the back, use the good. Some of the books that I bought were in good shape, but they were used. You don't have to buy for the actual price. When you go on Amazon, you go into hardcover, paperback, and then other ways to pay. And then to show you some of that stuff. You can figure out if you want to get one used or if you got the money brand new. Hey, man, I, I, I'm I a retired dude, man, retired military. I, I get what I can get from what I got, <laughs> which ain't much. But from what I do have and what I did learn, what I was able to learn under Elder Ayel, um, from you can call him under his YouTube channel, Ayel Ban Ephraim, Ban Yashala. I gained a lot of understanding and information, and he showed me where to go to get it. He's a really good guide. I consider him, as the books show it, when you read them, as the last prophet. You can agree to disagree. That's on you. Let your spirit bear witness. Listen to the man preaching. Listen to what he teaches. And does it line up with the word? And then you ask yourself, who in any one of these churches... Any one of these channels is sticking directly to the script of what Christ taught. It's that man right there. So I don't raise one man up against another, saying there aren't others, there aren't other disciples, other teachers, but he's righteous. He is a righteous man. And I want to speak the truth and give honor to a man for doing the same thing. And it led me to the truth. And I do appreciate him. So if you go on his channel, I promise you, 
let the spirit bear witness. Yeah, he's going to be that that Isaiah 58 1. Cry out and spare not. Show the children of Israel their sins. He's going to tell you the truth. He's going to keep your attention. I promise you. I got this book from off the One Nation, One Power website. And it basically tells you a lot of the customs and things that these folks were doing already when they got here. It tells you basically how they were following the sacrament, um, circumcision, all the stuff, all the Hebraic laws. They were already following that. This is another one with information and some uh, pictures. Christ in ancient America. Milton R. Hunter. Again, these books, this one by George Jones, The History of Ancient America, it's called um, Scholar Select. So they know this is teaching the truth. And you got scholars of certain universities that actually teach this stuff. But it's so much that they actually is in the Library of Congress. Again, they know who the true children of Israel are. But do you? This one tells you about the history of religion by Edward Ryan. And it basically tells you how religion, different religions, took you away from just following the creator and his words and his ways. Is man taking it, making it something that befits their agenda to mentally and physically entrap you into their society and their system, which we know now during these days is the B system. Man, I dropped a lot of stuff <laughs> off my shelves. Popol Vu. This shows you a lot of the pictures or the carvings of where the information is. That's another reason why they won't let you go in certain places. It's not just about the pictures that you see of some of these things, but it's hieroglyphics. It's picture writing. The Hebrews language is a picture language. So they don't want you to see certain things so you can see what the truth is. Again, you get that understanding for yourself. Columbus, in his quest for Jerusalem, name is Carol Delaney. And it tells you about the lands, what they looked like when they first came here. Columbus in his quest because he knew where the 10 tribes were by reading second Ezra's. Now, a lot of folks are still caught up in skin color. A lot of folks are still caught up in skin color, thinking that all that look like us is us. Not realizing the Hamites are the, the, the father. Ham is the father of all dark races except the Negro. In Zondervan's Bible Dictionary. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with being one with a folk and saying, hey, these are our people, too. Well, they are people in spirit if they follow the laws of the Most High. But it's the Pan-Africanism thing. It's Again, the whole hoax started way back with um, uh, Melville Her Herskowitz, who was in here. This last book that I'm going to show you, and you can look him up. I'm going to say Herman Melville. Let me get his name right. I always mix his name up. I want to make sure I'm saying it correctly. Melville Herskowitz is his name. That was the guy that worked for the Smithsonian. M-E-L-V-I-L-L-E -L -L -E, Herskowitz. Herskowitz. H-E-R-S-K-O-V-I-T-S. -E He's a European anthropologist. And he was the originator of the out of Africa theory. Theory. So look him up. You're going to learn a lot about him. And, and lastly, like I got to say this book right here, open your eyes to a lot more stuff than just um, things specifically about our people and where we were located and what we look like. We're talking about some of the places, the ports, the diagrams of the land. 
the mounds or where pyramids were. Um, a lot of different stuff by James W. Lee is the author. By James W. Lee. And it's funny. You look on here, there's different things. It's 12. And they're different ways of a dragon, an eagle, whatever. <laughs> Symbolism is something. One world Tartarians. I pray that with this lesson, the most high was edified. I wanted to show you a lot of truth that's right out there in front of us for us to see and understand for ourselves. Using the Holy Spirit to help us guide us through it as our decoder ring. But it's a lot of information that's right there. These are books that I, I can almost promise you, you will not see shown to you in academia for edification. Nobody wants you to know the truth. Nobody wants you to live in the truth. Unless it suits them. So this was not only a black history lesson. It's a Hebrew history lesson. There's a lesson on all the nations of the earth. That's what Gentiles mean. Nations. Not white folks. We got to get out of this color. And get into loving our neighbor as ourselves. Regardless of what they look like. One last thing I will say is it tells you be careful how you treat people because you may have entertained angels unaware. Imagine if you called a white homeless person, some white bum, as I hear people say, and say, oh, no, I'm not going to give them any money. They're probably going to get drugs. They're going to get crack or they're going to get meth. And that's an angel. Imagine missing out on that blessing. Imagine missing out on that test of the most high of your heart. How else is the best way for them to hide themselves amongst us? And the people that people don't even want to notice can look over the easiest. That's why it's important to follow the two commandments of, of Christ given to us by the Father, which encompasses the Ten Commandments. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Regardless of what they look like, what background they came from, love them. Love them how they will allow you to love them. Friends and family, especially with folks in the truth, if you have to love them from afar, from a distance, then so be it. It's not easy. It could be a father, a mother, a brother, a sister, people that you grew up with and you've known all your lives. But the most high chose to awaken you and not them yet. And it, maybe it might be you awaken them. He awakens them through you. But it takes time and patience and those fruits of the spirit that the most high bless you with. Use them, not just for the people you know, but the people you don't know. I encourage folks to continue to do those things, those that are already doing it. Um, again, I was taught it was a guy named philip croyle that was also on one nation one power i'm not sure what's going on with him and where he is at this point in time but he was teaching us how to download the books download them to an email and um you shoot that email through fedex fedex gives you a excuse me fedex kinkos or um the copying folks they give you an email to send to them and then they scan the email and they scan that PDF book and you can make it out and you can make it out with a, a, a binder, like an actual book book or with spirals like that one that I had. And you can do it that way. So if it's easier for you to do that than it is to order it online, then just do it that way. Especially if some of these books aren't even able, you can't even get them like the the quest, the Columbus and the quest for Jerusalem by Carol Delaney. Um, it's hard finding that one. I also got um, one fold, one shepherd that I didn't show and go through. But that's a really hard book to get. And I had to get that one used. Um, so I, I'm just going to say what you guys be encouraged. Be encouraged. You probably gonna hear my dogs at the end because the ambulance just came by. Um, be encouraged. Stay faithful in Christ. Continue to follow his commandments. 
repent every day always stay in a mode of humility not just for yourself but for the people you're around let them see the light of christ shine within you tell them and teach them the truth if they got questions you don't necessarily have to show them this video you can give them some of the references that i gave you in this video that hopefully you wrote down for yourself but by all means definitely do share and put out the information to help others um you send them to people or give them information to people that are going to tell you teach you the truth that you feel the holy spirit teaching or preaching through them through their words or giving you the words that are coming from the spirit and not someone that's trying to lift themselves up and raise themselves up because everything that i do is for the kingdom of heaven every single thing that i try to do for anybody is for the kingdom of heaven i feel like i have to prove myself every day i have to humble myself every day every single day i have to beat my flesh and not physically i'm not whipping myself on the back no cat of nine tails but i feel like that's where i need to be to always squash my pride so that the most high can use me and with the folks that you see that are doing the same thing that are telling the truth that are bearing their all to give you everything that's within them that christ has given them especially among their fruits those are the people that you need to i won't say migrate to but the people that help feed your spirit so that you can feed others so again i say um definitely look on i want to say his name is brother kadosh um one nation one power check him out check out mari's feaster um uh onop church of christ or one nation one power church of christ coc check out him check out ivan pridgen i-v-a-n-p-r-i-d-g-e-o-n um and the uh i want to say the the leader of one nation one power um il ban ephraim ban yashala you want to get fed the truth you want to get fed scripture you want to be holy spirit led go with what these men are showing you and leading you make sure you mark off in your books where you are where they take you to where you may not have read for yourself and continue to serve the most high with all your soul your heart mind and body i love you guys i want to say shalom